I'm beautiful and lovely gamers, my name is Jonal. Today we are talking about Game Sense, how to acquire it, how to use it. And a lot of time in game, what we see is that, you know, people will be like, Yeah, I know all of these things, I know how to play the game, I, I have all this game sense, and then you get into the game and then like just like all brains just goes out the window and you feed your ass off and you don't play smart and you just play stupid and you go into bad old habits that you should already have gotten, you know, out of and it's just a horrible, horrible experience. So we're gonna talk about how to use your brain essentially in game and also how to acquire game sense. So let's talk about that. Now, when this video is live, I will be streaming on Twitch right now. So link down in the description to my Twitch. We do breakdowns or watch the coaching of you guys. Uh, guess my SR if there's enough viewers, watching you guys highlights and montages. Uh, general having a good time, I'm also probably gonna play some ranked. And general just have a good time coaching, just chilling, um, doing some coaching, hopefully uh, having a, a good experience. So we streamed yesterday. That was amazing. Let's hope that today will be just as good. So I hope I see you there again. Link down in the description, including uh, the Discord link, so that you guys can drop in your VODs so we can coach them. Uh, the clips will get some SR montages and other cool stuff, uh, and links and so on, including just an overall awesome community. And of course, as always, if you want to hire me as your private coach this summer, if you want to improve over the summer, it's 50 euros for a two hour session. Doesn't matter if you're bronze or stuff or 100, so hit me up in a DM on the Discord server, and my Twitter will also be linked down there in case you want to hit me up with a follow, but with no further ado, let's just begin. So, how does, um, how do you obtain game sense? That's a kind of big question first. So, obtaining game sense, the easiest way is to learn it from someone else, that's kind of like the fastest way, um, and the quote-unquote most correct way to learn something. Uh, if you don't have time or you're new to the game or something, like that that's a very easy way to do it. This goes with YouTube videos, of course you need to be critical, of what you think and what i think is the most important thing is that one understand that everything has a pro and a con uh, i can't stand when people are like this is the best thing and there's just no weakness in it or this thing is just absolutely garbage and should never be played everything has a pro and a con to it uh sometimes a lot of time the, the cons greatly outweighs the pros uh, but sometimes you do have a pro and a con to it and that's the important thing to know uh, watch everything with a pinch of salt that doesn't mean you should disagree with everything but try to look at it from their point of view try to look at it as situational and take whatever um, game sense you can get out of it sometimes the game sense is either uh, overflowing or like kind of like mismatch information information that sometimes makes sense or but it's like a situational thing so be critical of what you of what you watch and what you obtain of knowledge from youtube twitch and whatnot um, but at the same time don't dismiss just absolutely everything listen to people but also make up your own opinion on certain topics and certain stuff um as as that's for me at least has always been a thing that you just need to be critical of what you watch as there's so much uh, information there and for a lot of people game sense and like what they have of opinions or picks or play styles or positioning and so on um it is not always you know coming from scrim experience or tournament experience like for example for me and also if you watch like jane jane is like a source that you can trust completely all the time because for example he has the scrim experience and team experience to actually get that knowledge out so just be critical of what you watch and um, the next one is my rabbit hole technique this is what i use to gain game sense without hiring a private coach or without doing anything like that of course again it speeds up the process but the rabbit hole theory is quite easy and that is just to backtrack through every single step until you find something now this was way more difficult before now it's super easy because the god loving replay system i love jeff kaplan so much for implementing this into the game so um yeah let's let's just let's just give an example a quick example. this is gonna be a little bit shit example but it's an example nonetheless let's say that you play this hanzo here on defense on um on hannah murphy's point okay so you gotta you just you have lost this point you're kind of like watching this back in your replay tool or whatever so this point was lost okay then you want okay why why was it lost and this is going everything from like why did i die why did i lose this one we won all the way up to um all the way up to for example why did i uh, lose this map why did i lose that that fight that that point all of that right for example sometimes it's like okay we lost second point because we lost first why did we lose first what could i have done to secure second more but also why did we lose first okay so in this scenario let's just say it like this so what happens is uh you go here you peek you try to snipe diana you miss three times in a row three four times in a row Three, twelve, four times in a row. On the armor, you get shot by the Kree. You you jump back in. You, you get shot by the Kree. You, you also see the hands which try to shoot you, so you jump back here. Okay? You jump back here. Uh, you're waiting to get healed up. This is not an ideal team composition. The enemy team pushes in with their team composition. Right? They wrote it here, whatever. Right? They kind of push your Reinhardt back a little bit. Uh, because your Kree was out of position here, he gets punished as the enemy team kind of pushes in. He gets quickly... Uh, punished and dies. Okay, so then the Kree is down. 
This hands will take this window. You manage to outduel him and kill him. But now you're kind of stuck that your team is kind of getting pushed backwards and so on. Your Widowmaker is not very good, so you're losing um, because of that. And now you're stuck here with, with a little bit, you know, you maybe have full health, but you're, 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 you're kind of weak, right? At that point, okay, they are consistently pushing up here. And now you kind of see how, like, how this is going bad, right? You're trying to fight and, and rotate back to the point. You are shooting arrows and you're not really getting anything out of it. You're not getting any picks, you're not getting any damage done. Um, and the enemy team really just rolls you and you manage to barely get to the point when your team essentially wipes and then you wipe after that. So what could we have done different as now? We gotta kinda like watch it back. And of course this is again a point point of view. It's much easier to do this in a replay tool or when we see the VOD, right? So first of all, okay, mechanicals. Okay, so for example, if I kill this Ana, that would most likely stop most of the push. Uh, if I just killed her immediately. Maybe I shouldn't go on for that. Maybe I should make an easier shot onto someone else. Maybe my target decisioning. Not just the fact that I missed the shot mechanically. But maybe my target decisioning. Was that like the best choice I could do here? So for example, if we rewatch it. And then you see, okay, this hands was actually standing quite still. Right? This this, this, uh, this McCree here wasn't in, in as good of a position. Okay, so maybe I should have just taken a shot there. Or maybe when I've taken uh, a shot over on this arm. And I said, okay, that wasn't good enough. Maybe I shouldn't have standed here for way too long. Maybe I should, at that point, have been, okay, this is taking too long. Like, I'm spending too much time at this target. So, okay, so the enemy team got to actually push up here and set up their push. So, maybe I should then have rotated up and started pressuring the Ryan. Maybe you see that the Ryan actually has started pushing a little bit too early. And you could therefore maybe have landed more shots on him to generally just shut down the push before anything happened. The same when you, when you took damage, you will leap back here. Did you need to give up that space, right? The Hanzo pushed the window afterwards, which did do that when your team was falling back, you were fighting this Hanzo, letting the enemy team push in without being punished here. So, did you need to give that window? You could also just, you could maybe just have stand it down here, or maybe even on this edge, getting healed from the Sen. And at that point, you could have just denied the choke, maybe sonar a little bit over here, so you had denied that area. Um, and then said, okay, did you have sonar? Why didn't you have sonar? Did you use sonar to spot the Ana? Okay, was that really ne necessary as you could just peek out the ledge? But that's really necessary sonar, right? At this point, you're rabbit holing, going downwards. And while your Widowmaker probably could have done more, your Kree was out of position, you had a shit team composition compared to the enemy team. That is not what we're looking at. We're looking at your mistake and you're backtracking, 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 and constantly arguing pros and cons of your decision making. For example, moving back here, secured myself, so I made sure I didn't die. I knew, I, I, I felt confident that if anyone pushed window, that I could do that, but it took too much time, maybe. The same with the shot on the armor. Did that take too much time? Was that the right decision? And not just was that the right decision in that moment. What is the pro and the cons of attacking the Hanzo, counter attacking the Ana, counter taking out the Kree? What would this have given you the benefit in not just this team fight, but like in a, stir, in a pure stat fight, what benefits would this have given you? In this upcoming fight, for example, by taking out the Ana, you could easily pressure the tanks, make sure that the pants, the tanks never got, make sure that the pants, the tanks, right, and never got enough hills. So okay, they couldn't push because you could, you took out the healer, the main healer, and now you just focus the tanks. So you could constantly like, try to shut down the push, sonaring the corner so the hanser couldn't peek you, and if he tried, he would be heavily outnumbered, or you could maybe one v one him, right? That way you could maybe get more stagger kills and so on, right? So that is the the easiest way to kind of for me at least, that I use. I broke down my gameplay, I broke down the gameplay of my team and other stuff, and then of course, as I said, I did learn from other people. Even though I didn't hire a private coach, or I didn't, there wasn't like the same educational content that there is now, there wasn't a replay tool when I started because it was so back. Nobody really knew what they were doing, like there were theories and people doing stuff, but there wasn't like as structured or as much knowledge about stuff as there is today. Um, this was how I like to do it. I also read on Reddit and kind of looked at people, what they thought and what they thought. I watched professional matches back then and watched everything from this like, okay, where are they positioned? Why did they get that kill? How did they get that kill opportunity? So if there's a big play that's made, I also like to watch, okay, how did they set up that big play? And also, how did the enemy team uh, let them set up that big play, right? What was our playability and so on? Uh, I like to watch stuff like that and trying to be like, okay, if they are losing this fight, but why? Okay, they don't have enough damage. Why don't they have enough damage? Okay, because they're all cluttered up in a in a big ball instead of like taking instead of taking like more and bigger positions, which we actually covered on stream today when we talked about Dallas Field versus uh, the Vancouver Titans. Um, how the different formations of the team actually did that the Titans could dominate Field. Now, how do you turn on your brain in the game? There is a billion ways, and this is so individual because it depends on you. Uh, I like to do what I like to call, um, uh, what, like how do I say it in English, uh, essentially um, examination. So essentially what I do is that I, t I mumble to myself, I don't speak in full sentences, right, because I kind of know what, like, it's kind of like my head is thinking, but I mumble to myself what I'm doing. So as I load into the map, I immediately start thinking, okay, it's 
Hanamura defense. Okay, what hero do I want to play? Not what hero does my team need me to play because this is solo queue right now, right? So this solo queue, if it's scrims or teams, I will probably know what team composition I'm playing because of the plan, right? And if it's that, then I'm running over the plan and what I'm playing and what I can face in scrim. If it's solo queue, I'm okay, this is Hanamura defense. Uh, what do I want to play? Okay, and then I, I probably pop up a list of like a couple of heroes. Let's say Hanzo was my choice. Okay, I want to pick Hanzo, instantly like Hanzo. And then I say, okay, how do I want to play this? And then I start making a plan. So I want to play up here. I want to deny a certain, certain amount of space. I want to play there. If they play this team composition, um, this very common team composition, like Bunker, for example, is very common rank now. Okay, I will play like that. If they play Goats, I will play like that. If they play Hammond, I will play like this. What heroes am I really, really scared of? I'm scared of, for example, uh, Doomfist. Okay, if they play Doomfist, how am I going to try to counter like that? Uh, should I even try to counter like that? What heroes would I like to meet? Okay, if there's a Senyata, that's an easy kill. So, okay, I want to meet Senyata. So, if there is a Senyata, I can try to see if I can bully him. If they play a Ryan competition, I can deny them in the choke. So, I, I make essentially, like, just a quick, like, plan. Like, okay, if they meet this and this and this, I know how to play that. This is the uh, problems. Uh, how can I potentially deal with that? This is stuff that I like to kill. So, this is how I want to deal with that. And sometimes, I deal with my problems by killing the stuff that I like to kill. So, for example, again, taking out the Ana so the Ryan can't push. Uh, that way, the Doomfish won't see any play. For example... Um, and then I've just mumbled to myself like I'm like, okay, if I need to if I really am that slow in my head right there And I can't focus I mumble to myself what I'm doing I'm pushing claiming claiming space here to be to be safe and then I'm like, okay So I claim space to be safe Okay, because my team is and where's my team and then I look and then oh my team is like way back here. Okay at that point Yeah, so that is a mistake and then I immediately try to correct that. Okay, so I should play further back my uh, in between fights I'm like, okay, it's in between fight their team has this and this and this player. He's normally out of position. This guy's normally out of position. This guy's really good. Watch out for that guy. Uh, my team uh, doesn't push that effectively. They don't use ultimates that. Okay, so I have noted they don't use ultimate. They don't push that much. So I need to deny areas and remember that my team plays very passive. Okay, so I kind of like, as I see the match unfold, I kind of like try to like profile quickly my team, try to quickly profile as much the enemy team. And there's certain stuff I don't care about. My Ana is shit. Okay, noted. But is that something that I should care about? No, like this doesn't help me. Okay, I don't know I can't rely on like super pockets. That's like it. That's the only thing I care about that. My Ana doesn't hit a shot. I don't get super pockets. That means that I can't go for very expensive trades all the time, uh, especially in the beginning of pushes. Noted. Next thing, right? So I kind of set up these very important thing and I kind of, uh, what's it called? I kind of justify my moves and my, and my arguments to myself. Why am I doing this? Is this okay? And so on and so on and so on. And this also does that when you're then watching back and doing the rapid hole technique or whatever and going backwards, you will quickly start noticing certain mistakes. For example, okay, I'm pushing at the claim space and I immediately die. Okay, so I, every time I say that, every time I, I mention to myself that I'm going to push down claim space, I normally always feed. Why is that? And at that point, you can rewatch your VODs and you can start looking for patterns. Okay, it's always because I always push low ground. I always, why don't I ever push high ground? That's weird. Or, oh, I always push too far forward. Or I always miss my shots when I push up alone, right? So, okay, so maybe I'm actually not as good as aiming as I thought. So, okay, is maybe my very weak spot at this thing is maybe uh, either that I'm taking too difficult fights with where the shots are too difficult, uh, or I'm staying up too late when the enemy team is pushing me and there's too big of a group, or just my mechanics are just not good enough to take out that kind of shots. Okay, now I'm starting to kind of narrow in patterns, and maybe it's all of those. So now I'm kind of starting to narrow in patterns of stuff that I need to... Uh, not do and if especially if it's a map I like to go over that map this is of course that banana you can also just go in game and be like okay so I held let's say I, I played this far back as Han I played over here with the widow is as Hanzo is there somewhere is a high ground that can that can help me fight in the choke that is less exposed right is there anything like that okay there's here okay that's still here it's still super far away though it's still and it's still like very difficult to shoot like the stuff behind here is another high ground okay there's this one Okay, so what's the pros and cons of this one? I can fall back to here. I have like a rotate up here. I can rotate up to the house. I can go in for this mega. Uh, if I want to go to the point, I can go there. Uh, I can, in theory, manage to play up top here. Okay, cool. So I can play much more aggressive in the choke. Uh, con, okay, I'm kind of trapped on this side of the map a little bit. Okay, so now I have like pros and cons. So now I know my position so I can play here a little bit more. And then I can maybe move here to here to here. Okay, so now I'm playing here. And for here, I can rotate to house. So now I'm like... Figuring out like patterns and like, okay, if this goes wrong, I have this fallback. If that goes wrong, I can go to point. If that goes, then I can go here and then I can go to the side ground. Then I can play here, which can allow me to there, which can allow me back to there. Okay, now I have like this cycling pattern that I can use. 
to kind of get around. That means I can go the other way. I can go here up to the house from house to point. Okay, there's this high ground around point. So if they are playing point and my team is caught on this side, which they normally do because they normally fight back that way. Oh, okay. So I can play up here now in the window to pressure a little bit. And it doesn't cost much because I can always rotate like this, drop main maybe, or fight this corner here to shoot down there. And again, I can go up to house and into the pack here or the pack behind here. So, okay, now I'm starting to like make a plan for myself that makes me pros and cons i still know about this location but it might not be as good maybe i'll use it from time to time like maybe i'll play uh, up here from time to time and attack someone over at this location or something like that right because that's a good corner peak so okay so if i play up if i get in this situation i know now about this corner peak but maybe that's not why i should do it early in the fight right so now you're starting to kind of build up games since ugly stuff and this is the best way for me at least the best way is, of course, to listen to people and understand what other people get. But I'm a self-learner. I need to to learn, teach myself stuff. Other people can help and other people can bring me knowledge and, and try to explain stuff. But in the end, because my brain is super fucking weird, I need to make my own kind of like system in my head. I need to kind of look and like I see like patterns and like, okay, this is pattern recognition. And then I like see patterns. That's how I learn. And if I need to justify actions to myself and explain action to myself, but that's how I learn. Other people learn by putting down this in, in, in spreadsheets and uh, like log statistics about when they die and when they don't die. Other people uh, learn from just mirroring other people's play styles and uh, not learning why they're doing stuff. And some people mirror other people's space and try to learn why, which I personally think is a narrow way of looking at stuff. But they kind of just like, yeah, I'll play here because it's a good position and this is a meta position. People learn in different ways. Uh, and how you want to put your brain in activeness um, is up to you. But I highly recommend just start thinking. In the beginning of the game to the end of the game, arguing. You lost the fight. Okay, what did they burn? What do they have? Where are you going? Why did you die? Where should you not push? Where are they most likely to set up their defense? Or where are they most likely going to attack from? Okay, where do you want to set up now in attack? Where do you now want to push as a, a defender? Right? Where, well, how do you want to do this? Right? Essentially, when you die in the spawn room, how is this fight elaborating out? Okay, so when I'm leaving a spawn, when I'm leaving a spawn, there is like, I can see like at least three dead symbols on my teammates. Meaning three people are dead. And I'm here. And my Ana is here. And my Lucio is like behind me. So maybe I shouldn't push. Okay, so I shouldn't push, maybe. Or maybe I should, if I'm Widow, take this angle and just look for a pick. Just, like, look for a pick. There's no one-shot potential, right? That way, we are starting to think anything. Like, like just everything. Like, in the, in the beginning, how did this fight end and so on. Just talk to yourself. Make yourself, force yourself to use your brain. Okay? And for me, at least, that works by mumbling to myself. And then my brain, like, really just starts in between fights. And... After you have forced yourself to do it a couple of games, you will most likely notice that this is something that you will start recognizing yourself doing just out of pure instinct. The most important thing is to not blame anyone else, not your teammates, nothing else. Don't blame anything else outside yourself. I normally have the logic as if I just land enough headshots, for example, on Hanzo, I would win the game. If I just land enough shots, right? If I just land enough shots, I will win the game, right? Uh, for example, when I play Hanzo, if I just headshot the entire enemy team, I will win this game, right? That, so, it, so there's always, like, in worst case scenario for me, there's always a mechanical limit on me as a DPS. Where, okay, if I just had landed that extra headshot, that extra really close, very very difficult shot to land, but if I had landed that shot, that would have turned the entire title of this fight, right? But I didn't, I missed. So that's a part of why I lost. So always having this, like, mentality of that it's always good, that it always... No one else's fault but your own. Some games are losable, but you should still perform at your very best in losable games. And you should still always try 100% new games. Because every game, a loss or a win, is a learning experience. If you play a lost game, it's the best learning experience. Because you're playing in the most difficult environment that you could ever play in. If you made it to the end of the video, tell me down in the comment section. Because that's fucking amazing. Because this video is super fucking long. I hope I see you on the stream. It's live right now. I hope I see you there. Uh, if you wanna, want to support the channel, there's a donation link right there that you can donate money. If you cannot, if you don't want to buy private coaching or in general, if you just want to tip in. If not, I would just love you to see you there in the chat, uh, being active and just in general, just meeting you. Uh, as I want to get to know more and more of the community, it's difficult for me to always talk through the Discord. So this is an easy way for me to meet the entire community. Now, guys, you know what I'm always saying. Please take care of yourself. Stay positive. I love you guys. Very, very much. As always, guys, my name is Joel. Have a lovely, lovely summer. And as always, keep the enemy in your closet. <laughs>